ഹിമാലയം <Sessizlik> يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي بَلَغَ الْعُلَى بِكَمَالِهِ كَشَفَ الدُّجَى بِجَمَالِهِ حَسُنَتْ جَمِيعُ خِصَالِهِ صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel and the social media, we are back with another episode of this program called The Early Echo. Indeed, through the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the divine blessings of our beloved Nabi, the Prophet of Mercy, the Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of the Ummah, the owner of Jannah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. May hundreds of thousands of salutations be upon the purified soul of our beloved Nabi, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, who is resting beneath the Ilyubinus Dome in Madinatul Munawwara. May hundreds and thousands of salams be upon Jannah. He is blessed as wajib mutahharat. He is blessed companions. He is blessed family members. Subhanallah and the awliya and salihin of this ummah. Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel and the social media. The discussion for today is a very important one. And that is the love and muhabba. The azmat and the status of the sa'adati kiram. Those who are the families of. the family members the blessed progeny of the beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam unki azmat unki shan the status of these great personalities we will be discussing in today's program as to how can we develop more muhabba and love for the families of the holy rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so please stay tuned to badri channel listen to this amazing uh, and uh, beautiful hadith mubaraka of our beloved nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a source of motivation subhanallah after you listen to this hadith e pak please please do make the intention of increasing your recitation of salat ala nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam it has been mentioned in a hadith man salla alayya fi yawmin alf maratin lam yamut hatta yara maq'adahu min al-jannati hi 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 the one who recites 1000 times durood and salutations daily he will not die until allah azza wa jalla will show him his abode in jannah subhanallah subhanallah this is only because of reciting abundance of salawat abundance of salutations this means that if a person reaches or recites he is given the ability and tawfiq to recite 1000 durood daily which shouldn't take much time subhanallah in exchange of that in return subhanallah the virtues of durood park is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show that person his place in paradise even before he dies before he leaves this world subhanallah مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير خلق كلهم هو الحبيب الذي ترجى شفاعته لكل هول من الاهوال مقتهم يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير خلق كلهم صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم so inshallah azza wa jal now we shall be listening to a nati rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we after we will be back remember the nati park that we are going to be listening to do today is wah kya martaba huwa tera Ay, what a beautiful nati park please stay tuned to madani channel enjoy this nati rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allow this to take you to madinatul munawwara for it will enlighten 
your hearts with the ishq and muhabba of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Please stay tuned to Madani channel. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Ya Nabi, Ya Nabi, Ya Nabi, Ya Nabi, Ya Habibi, Ya Rasulullah, 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 Ya Habibi, Ya Oh, 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 oh,
حبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم صلاة وسلام علیکہ یا سیدی یا رسول اللہ وسلم علیکہ یا سیدی یا نبی اللہ what a beautiful and amazing and lighting ناتی رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم which has definitely refreshed our hearts and minds سبحان اللہ it has rejuvenated our محبہ and love for the holy رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم why not the one who has not being faithful to our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who does not respect our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can he be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ba khuda khuda ka yehi hai dar, nahi ohr koi mafar makar, jo yaha se ho, wahi aaki ho, jo yaha nahi, to waha nahi, Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers and listeners of Madinin channel, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Always begin your day by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make as much a dhikr you can because it is through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is through the remembrance of Almighty Allah azza wa jal. You will receive the tranquility and satisfaction of your hearts. Your heart can only be satisfied when you make the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal. You can only attain the happiness of the hereafter. The happiness of this world can only be attained by making the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal. By worshipping him abundantly. تو آپ جب آنکھ کھلیں تو میں سو جاؤں یا مصطفیٰ کہتے کہتے کھلے آنکھ سلے علا کہتے کہتے کوشش کریں کہ when you go to sleep at night and as you open your eyes in the morning make شکر to Allah عز و جل every single day develop this habit on a daily basis try and show gratitude to Allah سبحانہ وتعالی for Allah عز و جل who is Malik, who is Mukhtar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the creator, he is the Khaliq, he, is, he has created everything. He will increase the bounties and the blessings which he has bestowed upon you because it is his promise, like in shakartum la azidannakum, that if you make shukr, I will increase the bounties which I have bestowed upon you. I will grant you more, subhanallah. So you make shukr for this life that you have, you make shukr for the air that you are breathing, subhanallah. Make shukr for the awlad and children that you have received. And on the other side, think and contemplate and think about those who don't have who don't have spouses at the moment, who don't have awlaad at the moment. Dunya ki har dawlat unke paas hai, magar is dawlat se mahroom hai. The dawlat and the wealth of awlaad. Allahu Akbar. Make shukar for what you have. Trust me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you even more. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the glorious Qur'an Ipaq. So, alhamdulillah, after um, understanding this and making firm intentions to always show gratitude and thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal, let us come to our asal and actual topic of discussion for today, which is the love of the Sa'adati Kiram, the love of the progeny of the Holy Rasul, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. I'm sure that you also have friends in your uh, cycle of friendship and you also have uh, relatives, perhaps family members who are Sa'adat who are from the family of our Birab Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So today inshallah we shall be speaking about them. Let us understand this from this angle first. What is the literal meaning of Sayyid? What is the literal meaning, the Lughwi mana, the, the literal meaning? So it has been mentioned that if you open the dictionaries you will find out that the literal meaning of Sayyid is Sardar. Sardar means the one who is a leader. Subhanallah. Sardar, leader, and 
In Indo Pak, it is commonly known as Sayyid are regarded as from the family of Hasnain Karimain. Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. Meaning those are known as Sa'adat who are from the blessed progeny of Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein. Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. Meaning from the family of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are known as Sayyid. Whereas if you go to Arab, the Arab countries, in the Arab countries, Sayyid is mentioned for every respectable and noble person. Jiski adab ki jati hai. A person who is of good reputation, he is known as Sayyid. Kete bhi hai, ya Sayyidi. Oh my master, oh my leader. Oh a Sayyid being a very noble personality. Whereas in the Arab countries, a person who is from the lineage and progeny of Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'in, they call them Sharif. Yes. A specific name for their identification is known as Sharif in the Arab countries. Whereas in India and uh, Pakistan and many other uh, countries of the world, Sayyids are known as from the progeny of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. In fact, Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Mujaddid Dino Millat Parvan Aisha Mi'i Risalat Imam Ahmad Rida Khan Alayhi Rahmatul Rahman He has mentioned Subhanallah, that Sayyid means the one who is from the family of Sibtain Karimain, meaning Imam Hassan or Imam Hussein. Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. Subhanallah. So, this was just to basically make our brothers and our uh, Nazireen, our viewers of Madinah shall understand that what is the literal meaning of Sayyid. So, yes, if you go to Saudi Arabia and you will say Sayyid Sahib for a person who is really a Sayyid. It actually means that you are respecting him, but you are not calling him by his actual title because there they would regard Sa'adat as Sharif. So every country have their own Uruf um, and uh, according to that people follow the norm of that country. However dear viewers on this Obadini channel, since Sa'adat are from the family, from the lineage of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam and if you open the books of history you would see that how much of love and respect they have been given and they are given in the light of quran e pak and hadith e mubarakah because it is this love of the saadat it is the love of these great personalities which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it obligatory upon every believing men and women in fact hazrat sayyiduna imam shahabuddin ahmad bin muhammad astalani rahmatullahi ta'ala ali he narrates from Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Tibri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali in Mawahibul Dunya. It, is, it has been mentioned that this great personality has mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal has made the love and respect of the progeny of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam obligatory upon every believing men and women. It is farad upon every Muslim, every believer to love the Holy Prophet and his progeny and, his, and those individuals who are from his lineage, his offspring, subhanallah. So therefore, their love is important and we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah azza wa jal grant us the tawfiq and ability to love them so that Allah azza wa jal can love us as well so that we can be loved by the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam so here is a question in the books these questions have been asked and I'm going to read them out and give the answer inshallah azza wa jal a question was asked a, an appeal was made as to can there be some clarification if somebody makes any gustakhi and disrespect of a sayyid meaning people would backbite and speak ill about sayyids who are sayyids those who are from the lineage and progeny of Imam Hassan or Hussein Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in to is hawale se kuch arz kiya jaya so the ulama and the scholars have mentioned that in general ghibat to har musalman ki haram hai ghibat and backbiting is haram and forbidden for any muslim but especially if it is a sayyid if it is confirmed that this person is from the lineage and from the family of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that person at that moment should bear in his mind that I am not making ghiba, I am not accusing or speaking ill of just an ordinary person rather this person being a Muslim at the same time has the nisbat and connection of being from the blessed 
progeny of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam backbiting about such a person, speaking ill about such a person, hurting his feelings. If doing so in the dunya makes me happy, what would happen on the day of judgment when I will be in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, a very beautiful and amazing parable mentioned. So, Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mubarak radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, a great wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has been mentioned that once he was going somewhere, aap kahi tashif le ja rahe the, so raaste mein ek sayyid zade mile. A young sayyid child, a young boy who was a sayyid, and he just said, wow, when he looked at Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, so that young sayyid zade, he said to Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi huzur, wow, amazing. You have such respect and honor and dignity with the words or with the clothes that you are using, with the way you address perhaps or the respect that you have. Saying this, that Sayyid Zadeh, that young boy, he said this and he said, look at me, mujhe dekhe, look at my simplicity. Look at the way I am dressed. Allahu Akbar. Look at the way I am you have more respect than me. You are honored more than me. So hearing this, Hadrat Sayyiduna Abdullah bin Mubarak Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said, Well, I had followed the teachings and the sunnas of your Nana Jan, our beloved Nabi Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And this is my maqam. Because of following the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa following the footsteps of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given me the sanctity, has given me the station and the status. If you feel people respect me and love me, it is because of following your own Nana Jan. Because you are a Sayyid, you are from his progeny. But you, you have followed my forefathers who have not received that status. And therefore you have received who you have followed. I am following your Nana Jan and I have received this Martaba and Shan and you are following my forefathers and thus the outcome of this is that you can see where you are standing right now. He said this, it has been mentioned, Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala ki bas ye kehna tana usi raat ko as he slept in his dream he seen the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and he noticed ki in his dream, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is unhappy with him, is unhappy about something. So, when they saw this in the dream, that the government of Dojahan, Ahmad Mukhtar, our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is unhappy. So he could not bear that. You take the government of the government and you ask, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, could you please explain to me what is the reason for you to be so upset? What is the reason for you to be naraz? So the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Abdullah bin Mubarak, you spoke to my offspring in such a way instead of covering his faults, instead of reforming him in a better way. This was the way you spoke to him? Allahu Akbar. Itna kehna tha. His eyes opened and he realized that he had been corrected in his dream by the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He immediately got up and then in search of that child, that young boy, that Sayyid Zadeh, he began to search the streets of his city. On the other hand, that young Sayyid Zadeh, that young boy who was a Sayyid who spoke to Hazrat in this way, he also had the similar dream that the Holy Prophet وسلم, came in his dream and rectified and reformed him as well. So he as well woke up and he was also in search of Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala Both of them were in search of each another. Or khojte khojte dhunte dhunte aap dono kisi ek maqam pe ja mile. They both have found each another at one specific place and the moment they seen each another, Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala immediately uh, seek forgiveness from him. He sought forgiveness and he said, please, O oh young Sayyid Sahib, please forgive me for speaking to you in that way. Please forgive me. And likewise, he being a Sayyid also apologized to Hazrat Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. From this we learn the importance of not backbiting about any Sayyid. If you know any Sayyid in your family, in your uh, friends that you know, that you have, please for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understand the importance of Sa'adat. Therefore, the ulama ikram 
you know, have said that follow the footsteps of our pious predecessors, you would learn how to respect. Sometimes you may present gifts to Sadat. Sometimes you only may show respect to them when you see them, when you meet them, or when you have the opportunity of being in the company. This is the time and this is the moqa, a chance you have to demonstrate the muhabba and love that you have for a Sayyid. If you open the books, subhanAllah, if you read or if you see on Madani channel over and again, on several occasions, our Amir Ahl Sunnat, Hazrat Allama, Maulana Abu Bilal, Muhammad Ilyas Qadri Taradavi, Damat Fuyuzuhum, subhanAllah, shows immense muhabbat and love and respect to the progeny of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Aap aksar dekhenge ki during his meeting and greeting, mulaqat ke doran, those people that shake hands with his eminence, subhanAllah, you would see that with so much of adab and respect, he would even kiss the hands of Sa'adat. Being such a great personality himself, subhanAllah, Amir al sunnat he would kiss the hands of those who are from the family of our beloved Nabi, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Many a times it was also seen that the children are chote hote, subhanAllah, they are brought for dham or they are brought to, for dua by Amir al sunnat and they are Sayyids, he would take the little cute legs and feet and he would place above his head saying, I make that the crown of my head wears. This is from the family of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. And therefore he places their feet above his head, showing respect and adab. This is a way of demonstrating muhabba, respect, reverence a person has in the heart for the family of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Many a times Amir al sunnat had been seen that if he is invited for any specific gathering and function or even during the Madhuri Muzakira, Subhanallah, not once but several times it was seen that especially in the functions and gatherings where there are other Sa'adat who are seated there, he would find it very difficult to sit on his Masnad or the places where he is invited to give a bayan and lecture, he would tell the people, please do not make me sit here. Or after sitting, he would tell the people that I have been made to sit here even though I do not wish to sit here. Lekin, what can I do for? I have been given this position to be seated here for today. But there are other Sa'adat who are in the crowd from amongst the people and I know them sometimes. They are identified. And because of his restlessness, many a times Amir al Sunnat during his lecture, during his bayan, during his conversation that he's having with the public, reforming people because of that beqarari, because of that feeling of showing disrespect, he would regard that as disrespect, he would leave his position where he's seated and he would go and sit amongst those Sa'adat on the ground with them. Allahu Akbar. They are different styles, they are different ideas and ways of showing muhabbat and love. It depends how much in love are you with the family of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel Subhanallah if you look at Sayyidi Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Rida Khan Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Amazing style and amazing way of loving the progeny of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam Ek Martabani Kai examples many many examples can be given of Sayyidi Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala In fact, Subhanallah, it has been mentioned that one occasion when a da'wat, a, an, an invitation was given to Sayyidi Allah Hazrat for a specific da'wat, you know, in those days, the respect and the adab was that a palki, jise hum palakwan kehte in English mein, in English is called palakwan, it would be sent, and this was to also show reverence and respect to the one that you invite. Is zamane mein aap gaari ghoda bechte hain, you send a horse, you send a vehicle, transportation to bring your mehman, to bring your guest. So a very well known person had given an invitation to Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala for, uh, uh, to come to his home for whatever the cause may have been. So therefore a palki was sent, a palakwan was sent for four people to carry Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Ek aisa waqiya hai that it leaves you know numerous lessons for us to extract from this subhanallah those people that like debating and bad mouthing saadat look at Allah hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala ali allahu akbar the moment he rahmatullahi ta'ala ali sat upon that palanquin and those four laborers were carrying Allah hazrat upon that palanquin and taking him to the dawat place where he was invited during that journey suddenly 
Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Ta'ala he said stop this palaquin those four people immediately stopped and they placed it on the ground Allah Hazrat Rahmatullah Ta'ala he got off the palaquin and he said tell me honestly and truthfully from among you four people who is a Sayyid who is a Sayyid who is from the progeny of my beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of my beloved Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, please do tell me for I can smell the saint of a Sayyid right here amongst us. One of you four people is a Sayyid. So be honest to me and tell me. Allahu Akbar. On the day of judgment, on the day of Qiyamah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I will be standing in the court of my Rabb and I will be accountable for my deeds, with what face would I stand in front of my beloved Master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If I would be told, Oh Ahmad Raza, Rahmatullah Ali, in the dunya, you set, you put your weight upon the shoulders of my progeny. This is how you had respected them, that you made them carry you to the places that where you went to. What answer would I then give to my beloved Aqa, to my beloved Master, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Therefore, I beg you to please tell me the truth. It is my request for you to tell me the truth. Who is a Sayyid? After much insistence, one poor laborer came forward. He was a masdur, he was a laborer, and he said, Well, Your Majesty, I am a Sayyid. Allahu Akbar. Allah, Hadrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. The moment he heard that this person is a Sayyid, he immediately removed his Imama Sharif and he placed it at the feet of that Sayyid. That was an ordinary man who was a Sayyid in terms of dunyawi's perspective. If you look at it from a dunyawi angle, from a worldly perspective, he never have much rutbah, he never have much status in terms of finance, in terms of being known. He was a very unknown person. People, he wasn't mashur or famous because of his knowledge or because of his wealth, etc, etc. Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala yet, just because he is a Sayyid and this enough is for me to show immense love and respect to him. He deserves this muhabba for the love of the Holy Prophet and his progeny has become obligatory upon every Muslim. Allah Hazrat placed his Imam Sharif at his feet and cried bitterly whilst he was weeping and he's saying, Oh Sayyid Zadeh, Oh family of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, forgive me. I was unaware that you are a Sayyid. Had I known that you were a Sayyid, I would have never allowed you to carry me upon your shoulders. I really don't know what answer would I give on the day of judgment when I would be asked, Oh Ahmad Raza, answer for this. How did you, how dare you allow my progeny to carry your weight and you claim to say that you are the lovers of Saadat, you are the lovers of Sayyids. What answer would I give? The only way to make up the kafara and the only way to, uh, to recover this is that now you will sit on this peloton, you will ride upon this and I will carry this to the place where we are going. Those people, those four people began to cry, including that Sayyid Sahib. They all began to cry saying, Huzur Asa Nakari, but Allah Hazrat insisted that if you wish to forgive me for this, what I have done, then the only way to recompense for this is that you will now ride upon this peloton and I will carry you to the house of the invite invitee. Allah Akbar. Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Ta'ala said such example, which is definitely unique, in fact, in his famous poetry, Subh Teba Me Hui, Batta He Bala Nurka, Sadka Lene Nurka, Aya He Tara Nurka, he Rahmatullahi Ta'ala composed such a beautiful Nati Pak, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he says, Teri Nasile Pak Me He, Bacha Bacha Nurka, Teri Nasile Pak Me Teri Nasile Pak Me Teri Nasile Pak Me Bacha Bacha Nurka, Tu He Aine Nur Tera Sab Gharana Nurka Subh Taiba Me Huvi Batta He Bada Nurka Sadqa lene noor ka Aya hai tara noor ka Subh taiba mein huvi batta hai Bada noor ka
صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم يا الله سبحانه وتعالى for the sake of سيد آل حضرت forgive our major and minor sins يا الله forgive our sins تلين شاء الله ايك package كي جانب هم جاتے ہیں ایک video ہے انشاء الله it is a request to the viewers and listeners of Madani channel to watch this video and the after we shall continue with our program please stay tuned to Madani channel صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم Are you stressed and depressed and concerned about this lockdown? Are you worried about this virus? Let me give you a few tips on how to turn this lockdown into a golden opportunity to lift your life up. This is beyond our control. It is the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. You can't control it, so why are you worried about something which is not in your control? Accept it as the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. And be happy. Don't be sad. Why? Because you didn't decide upon this. Every morning when you get up, you've been granted an amazing month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. This month is full of blessings and full of the mercies of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now when you get up in the morning, have a nice bath, take a shower, perform ghusl, apply oil, put fragrance on, fresh clothes on and look the part. When you're standing in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal, make sure that you've made every effort. Now, once you've done that and you look the part, then start your day by protecting your salah, praying Fajr on time, making sure that you stand in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal humbly and sincerely. Make sure that the five daily salahs are protected. This is the most important thing you can do to protect your health and to protect your mental well-being. Then, the greatest blessing, the glorious Qur'an. It is truly a miracle, and it is truly a cure. Take it with both hands. Spend time reading the glorious Qur'an. You know, we have always wanted to say, you know, if I wish I had time to read the glorious Qur'an, but with busy life, I haven't got the time. Well, you've been gifted the time by Allah Azza wa This Ramzan al-Mubarak, You've got all the time in the world. Let's spend it reading the glorious Quran, reading the translation and reading the commentary. If you go on to dawatislami.net, you can download Ganzul Iman English translation. You can download Siratul Jinan Tafsir, which is in Urdu. And even if you can't read Urdu, somebody in the household can. Everybody sit down as a family and read the beautiful translation and the commentary of the Quran. And if you spent a few hours doing it, one para a day wouldn't take long, but after the 30 days of Ramadan and Mubarak, you would come out having read the entire Quran with translation and commentary. Even if it takes longer than a month, so what? This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Take it with both hands and let the Quran shower you with blessings and mercies and open up your mind. We need to stay healthy. We need to go for walks. And most of us are doing so. And the doctors recommend about 7,000 steps a day. In this Ramadan and Mubarak, when all good deeds, the reward for them is increased many fold. Why don't you grab a tasbih? Go for a walk. The doctors say 7,000 steps. How beautiful would it be if you recited through the park uh, roughly about 2,000 times and you'll have walked 7,000 steps. But if you're a fast walker and you haven't recited, two th uh, you know, you've gone through the tasbih, recite Ya Allah a thousand times. That helps relieve your stress, and depression and anxiety. Then you can go even further. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. You can recite all of these. You can recite Astaghfirullah in abundance while you're walking. So Alhamdulillah, you're keeping, nourishing your body by exercise, but also nourishing your soul with the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. Then, reading. Reading is so, so important. We don't need read many Islamic books. We always look for the opportunity. This is your opportunity. If you go to dawatislami.net, there are hundreds of books to download on different topics. Beautiful books, very enticing. Very, the reader it encompasses himself within these great books and you learn so much. Learn about the beautiful life of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learn about the beautiful sunnahs of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Learn about how to read your salah correctly. 
learn about the glorious month of Ramadan and all the etiquettes of it by reading Fazani Ramzan. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fatawa razia sharif Sayyidi Ala Hadith rahmatullahi ta'ala li answering a question of a person that a Sayyid respect of a Sunni Sahihul Aqeedah Sayyid from the Ahle Sunnah Wal Jama'ah that is Aqeedah and his belief system is not corrupted rather it is straight it is correct subhanallah and he is a Sayyid confirmed Sayyid then the answer to that is that you cannot hate him and you cannot speak ill of him even if his actions are incorrect but if a person commits guna and sins then of course you should not hate the person himself but rather you should hate the guna and the sins nafrat to gunaho se honi chahiye na ki bande se honi chahiye for he is a human being and over and above he has connection with the holy rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to us bande se us insaan se us shakhs se nafrat na ki jaye knowing that he is a sayyid rather the nafrat and the hatred should be with the gunas and the sins of the actions of that person no matter how bad the deed it may be of that person you should hate the action and not the person subhanallah what a beautiful answer in fact hazrat alama maulana sayyiduna qazi ayaz maliki rahmatullahi ta'ala li apne zamane ke bade buzurg guzre hain subhanallah he has mentioned that a person who loves the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the proof and the evidence subut kiya hai is cheez ka ki aqa ke har cheez se jo connection hai usse bhi mohabbat karega banda he would love everything that has nisbat and connection with the holy master sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would love makkatul mukarrama because this was the birthplace of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahu akbar he would love the streets of madinatul munawwara and everything in madina for these are the places and the streets which kiss the feet of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would love everything in terms of clothes imama tabarrukat everything that my beloved nabi loved he would also love jis khane se hamari sarkar ko mohabbat thi us khane se bhi wo shakhs mohabbat karega this is the saboot and the evidence and proof that you love the holy rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and likewise when you meet and you see a sayyid ki ye sayyid sahib hai sayyida hai ya sayyid hai you would respect them if you have any chance of putting yourself down you would do so to make them feel better you would not fight with them you would not debate with them allahu akbar you would show respect to them and adab to them and this is the alamat and the sign of ahle sunnah wal jamaah subhanallah what is that alamat that they love the saadat and those who are from the family of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam humko sare sayyido se pyar hai humko sare sayyido se प्यार है इन शाह अपना बेड़ा पार है इन शाह अपना बेड़ा पार है इन शाह जबजल यू विल अटेन सल्वेशन फ्रॉम डिफिकल्टीज इन दिस वर्ल्ड एंड इन दियर आफ्टर इफ यू हैव ट्रू कनेक्शन एंड लव with the family of our beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam furthermore dear viewers and listeners of the channel a question was asked how is it to employ sayyids and especially if it is a bad employment or employment which is known as to be not a good work such as cleaning of the toilet but like just cheez mein zillat ho izzat aadmi gawa de kho de in which the reputation and the dignity of a person is degraded such type of employments the answer was that one should not do that one should not give such a job or position to a sayyid a confirmed sayyid for him to have such a position it is totally wrong in fact uh, furthermore it has been mentioned that do not even take such types of work from a sayyid which are embarrassing types of work or work that will degrade his status because he is from the family of the holy rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to this extent that even if he is studying whether it is secular education or deeni education if a child is becoming a hafiz if he is a sayyid then he should not even be beaten this should be avoided from hitting raising your hands on a sayyid child for he is from the progeny of the holy rasul sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam another beautiful parable that sayyidi ala hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala li had a youngster 
whose job was to bring food and come from the house of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala. Le. Or you know, Jawan tha. This was his job to bring, go to the office of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala, carry messages, take work, and do whatever task that was given to him to do. After some time, Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala le found out that he is a Sayyid. Allahu Akbar. He immediately changed the entire contract. And he goes to his house and he says, "Khabardar to his family members, beware! As of today, nobody will give this child any such difficult task or work to do." Allahu Akbar. He is from the family of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, I announce that that salary that used to be given to him should be now given to him as a gift and hadiyah. Allahu Akbar. Such respect and adab. He used to bring food for me, but now I would feed him and I would show muhabbat and love to him. And it is, has been mentioned in Hayat Allah Hazrat that for a very long time. This child or this boy remained in the company of Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala Li till then a time came when he had left that place and he went to another place. So Allah Hazrat Rahmatullahi Taala Li in his blessed life had shown given many examples, especially for those people who ask for proof ki koi sabut pesh kare ki koi sayyid hai. So if somebody had asked for this, because this is also a question, agar kisi sayyid hone ka sabut na ho. تو کیا اس کی بھی تعظیم کی جائے if someone does not have a proof and evidence of him being a سید so this was also asked اللہ اکبر اللہ حضرت رحمت اللہ تعالی says on many occasion he answered these questions if a person has no proof of being a سید the answer given to this is that you have no right to keep on digging and investigating and asking for a proof from him for being a سید as long as he has said or she has said they are Saadat and they are from the family of the Holy Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then the case has changed and you as a believer you as an Ummati should not debate on the Nasab on the lineage that you have to prove how you are a Sayyid there is a difference between those that you know and confirm we will come there inshallah in the next 2-3 minutes but about those who you don't know we don't know that it is not a Sayyid so we don't need proof or evidence over and again that prove it to me but rather Allah Rahmatullah says no do not ask or a Hikayat bhi bayan ki saath hi saath mein that there was a personality who was having a debate with a Sayyid ki bas sabit kar do ki tumhara nasab Hassani Husseini hai prove it to me that your nasab and your lineage is from Imam Hassan Imam Hussain Ridwan Allah Ta'ala alayhim ajma'een you are from the progeny of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that night this person had a dream ki maidane mashar ka sama hai and the time of accountability have been established people are standing on the plains of mahshar and people are accountable Allahu Akbar and now the accountability has began people are going into Jannat people are going into Jahannam those who have done wrong deeds and this person who had a debate with that Sayyid he is having this dream and he says now my turn came and I wanted Shafa'at of Mustafa I wanted the intercession of Mustafa and therefore I am begging Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam maybe to aapka ummati hu maybe bhi to Shafa'at farmaya aap Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar the Holy Prophet asked him, What proof do you have that you are my Ummati? Just as you was asking my progeny for proof for being my progeny and from my descendants and from my lineage, now I'm asking you for what is your proof for being my Ummati? This person says, Then Perimariyanke Kuli and I made istighfar, I made toba, and uske baat se, I had never ever debated with any Sayyid, with any family member of the Holy Rasul. But yes, what if a person claims to be a Sayyid but he is not really a Sayyid? The answer given by the ulama and the scholars is that he is a very big sinner for doing so. His fard and nawafil too will not be accepted until he makes tawbah. He should, make, should be making tawbah because in the light of a hadith that the Holy Prophet has mentioned, the person who lies about his lineage and he makes someone else his father and he denies his original father. For example, my forefather was somebody else but I am saying I am a Sayyid and I am from the gharan of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa knowing that I am not, he knows for himself he is lying. Then he is a sinner, his nawafil and his the faraib also will be rejected Allahu Akbar on the day of judgment so alhamdulillah dear viewers of the Samadhani channel if you have the chance of showing adab and respect to the progeny of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then do so today because you don't know this could be your zari'ah this could be the reason for your bakhshish in this world and in the hereafter sallu alal habib
صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مدینہ چینل کے ناظرین کا شکریہ ادا کرتا ہوں اینڈ اسپیشلی فار دا ویورز آف مدینہ چینل وائی دا سوشل میڈیا دوبارہ اس پروگرام کے ساتھ حاضر ہوں گے جب تک اپنا خیال رکھیے اسٹے گڈ ڈو گڈ بی گڈ اینڈ ریممبر وے ایور یو آر دا مشنری اسٹیٹمنٹ آف دا عبت اسلامی از آئی مسٹ ٹرائیو ٹو ری فارم مائی سیلف اینڈ دا پیپل آف دا انٹائر ورلڈ ان شاء اللہ عز و جل صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم اللہ اللہ start your day with remembrance of Allah start your day with remembrance of